organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, an Iowa City fire and a local man who came to the rescue. And mystery solved, we'll dig up the secret behind the tents in Hubbard Park. And in weather, it's snowing again, but this time it looks like it won't be around for long. And in sports, track, wrestling, and basketball all coming up. We have it all at the top of the hour. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Stefan Duran. And I'm Brianna Jett. Iowa City is home to its very own hero. A fire erupted in an Iowa City apartment building on Lucas Street Tuesday morning around 9.30 a.m. Mike McGillan, a local maintenance worker, helped several tenants escape the building. McGillan was in a nearby building when he heard screams. He helped one woman from a two-story window. Firefighters believe the blaze started in a laundry room and no injuries were reported. Mysterious white tents popped up in Hubbard Park last week. Many people on campus have been curious about what is going on behind their closed doors. Our own Stefan Duran did a little digging earlier today to un uncover the truth. Snow has made many construction projects in Iowa City stall this winter season, but as of last week, something else delayed renovations at Hubbard Park. Artifacts dating hundreds of years were found during the excavation, and measures had to be taken before construction continued allow the state archaeologist to get in, do the excavation work, do the uh, uh, investigatory work they need to before we start construction again at that portion of the site. For about a week now, many University of Iowa students have been wondering what has been going on behind this tent. While many archaeologists say the artifacts they found here have dated back to when Iowa City was first formed. All of it is consistently before the Civil War. Um, We've gotten a bunch of coins. The uh, youngest is 1851 and the oldest is 1833. Many former and current Iowa students have been taking part in this ongoing historical dig. Throughout the process, they have been able to sift through and find many artifacts showing signs of what this area was like in the past. And unlike other digs, this one in particular has given archaeologists a lot of digging freedom. When, when you're uh, under sort of a construction setting, you get to expose huge areas and uh, get to get a better idea of what was actually here. So I really enjoy being able to see a site, you know, remove as much dirt as possible to see what's going on. The team has found numerous artifacts this winter and plans to search other parts of Hubbard Park coming this spring. Stefan Duran, Daily Iowan TV. The cold weather is canceling more than just school in Iowa. Blood, blood banks across the state have canceled many of their blood drives due to the weather. Now, the blood banks are struggling to fill even their reserves. Even the University of Iowa DeGown Blood Center has been canceling their drives. Democrat John, John Narciss, if he wins the election for governor, will change the way students in Iowa pay for college. He plans to pay for the tuition of in-state students if they agree to work in Iowa for four years after graduation. He is run, running under the Democratic ticket, but is upset at the way the party has been working with the Republicans. He told the Daily Iowan, quote, when you can't tell the difference between Republicans and Democrats, you don't want to be a part of either. So I'm going to fight to take my party back from the hijackers. The election will take place in November. Valentine's Day is almost here, and we've got the scoop on the best wine choices for your special dinner. But first, we've got Megan Sanchez standing by with our holiday forecast. Megan, should we be expecting snow on Friday? Well, guys, Valentine's Day should be clear and sunny. And as hearts begin to warm up for the holiday, so will the temperatures. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off at 19 degrees, but we are in for a treat for the afternoon with a high of 34 degrees. We'll round out our Thursday with an evening high of 23 degrees. Looking into the rest of the week, the high will be 17 degrees for Valentine's Day and no snow is expected. Saturday, however, there is a 70% chance for snow with a high of 23 degrees. Sunday, temps will reach just up to freezing at 32. Monday and Tuesday will almost reach 40 degrees, but watch, out, watch your step on Monday. There's a 50% chance for ice pellets, so try not to slip. 
That's all I have for weather. Happy almost Valentine's Day. Back to you guys at the desk right after this. Iowa SJMC. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? I joined and now I'm in Los Angeles, California, interning for Conan O'Brien at Warner Brothers Studios. I joined and now I'm working in public relations for diabetes research. SJ. MD. Thanks, Megan. Well, it's that time of the week. We've got Alyssa Bergamini standing by with Hawkeye Buzz. So, Alyssa, what's the buzz? Hey there, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Hawkeye Buzz. For many, Valentine's Day means lots of chocolate and lots of wine. We checked in with some local stores to find those top-notch wines for this occasion. Our own Gabriella Dunn has a sweet story. Flowers, chocolates, and red and pink hearts are some sure-tell signs Valentine's Day is approaching. Another novel characteristic of this loving day is wine, and in Iowa City, we've got plenty of that. With Valentine's only one more day away, at Bread Garden Market, wine specialist Dan Ceresia showed me some wine selections for the special day. I was going with this. We've got some sweet reds, um, some sweet whites, chocolates to pair, and then things for the morning after, um, and non-alcoholic sparkling in case your girlfriend or wife is pregnant. Wake up in the morning and have brunch, right? Since Bread Garden's recent expansion of their wine bar, Ceresia said they are now able to offer more promotional events including an already sold out beer tasting for Valentine's Day. While Bright Garden has plenty of wines to choose from, there's another local grocer that's on the wine radar for Valentine's Day as well. John's Grocery has been an iconic Iowa City landmark for having the largest beer selection in Iowa, but their wine selection has been growing as well. John's has always been known for beer, but when wine came on now, beer and wine are pretty much evenly split. If you're looking for a wine on Valentine's Day, Pot suggests a sweeter, fruitier wine like Moscato. Gabriella Dunn, Daily Iowa TV. Thanks for that, Gabriella. I'll have to try some of that wine myself. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Hawkeye Buzz. I hope you all have a very happy Valentine's Day. And guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Alyssa. Well, a shortage of cattle is forcing businesses to spike up their beef prices nationwide and here at home. The amount of meat being packaged has decreased over the past three years, causing the price to rise. Many shoppers aren't too happy about this increase. These record highs are due to a variety of factors, but recent drought and cold weather might be to blame. And now let's take a look at what's happening beyond Iowa. The United States Congress passed a clean debt limit extension last night, a passage seen as a victory for President Obama. The measure would raise the amount of money the country can borrow. However, it does not include any spending conditions, which is why it's considered clean. For years, the Republican House has said that any debt extension must be matched with spending cuts. But due to Republican dis disunity and Obama's refusal to bargain, the measure was passed without conditions. An avalanche in the mountains of Oregon left two skiers dead and another two seriously injured yesterday. A, hel a helicopter was sent to rescue the survivors but couldn't get close. This is just the latest avalanche to take a life. Twelve people have died this season and six since Sunday. Speaking of natural disasters, China was hit with an earthquake today. Although no deaths were reported, several homes were damaged. The China Earthquake Network Center reported a magnitude of 7.3. Now let's toss it over to Jalen Socek in the sports studio for a look at everything black and gold. Jalen? Thanks, Stefan. Welcome back to your Wednesday edition of the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio. Jalen Socek here filling you in on everything you need to know about the black and gold. A lot to get to on tonight's edition, so let's get right to it. Both the men's and women's track action is indoors this weekend due to the w winter conditions, but you can be sure one Iowa trackster is embracing the weather, if nothing else, because it feels like home. Daily Iowan TV sports reporter Rachel Bedell has a story of one Iowan's journey to down south and back home again. James didn't take the normal path of growing up in the state of Iowa and going to its home school. I went down to Bama and really fell in love with Bama and um, this, they're new. They got a new coaching staff. Uh, I really like the coaches and they're getting a new facility too, so everything was like new about the program. There are a lot of things that drew James to the South, but there was one thing missing and that was home. Uh, I wanted to be closer to my family. Uh, I was so used, like in high school, I was so used to them coming to all my meets and supporting me. 
What James didn't know is that he would find another family. It's over the last you know, couple months, I think he's really gotten a lot closer to the guy, especially once we started competing. I think the guys have a lot more respect for him after they've seen him really get after it and compete. It is really a, f a big family atmosphere. And um, like the second I stepped on uh, to campus and I, in the first practice, I felt like I was part of the team and part of the family. And this family is more than happy to have him. Um, you know, he's a talented kid, so it's always good to have somebody like that on the relay. And, uh, you know, he's got a pretty good attitude when it comes to racing, and, you know, he wants to run fast, so that's always good to have. Really bring a lot, not only to the team, but, but really help us at the Big Ten and the national level. And a championship would be the perfect coming home present. Rach Bedell, Daily Iowan TV Sports. The track team is set to compete this Valentine's Day weekend in Ames and Arkansas. Another homecoming of sorts for one other Hawkeye, this time on the mat. Pennsylvania native Josh Javah is returning home this Friday as they face number 21, Lehigh University. For this 141 pounder, going back home gives him more motivation. No, yeah, I'm fired up to get in front of my people that have been around me since I was yay big, you know, it's exciting. Was there anybody there at the hike? Where's Lehigh? It's only about an hour, so you know I'll have a good crowd there. I don't know, that are going out specifically to see me, so it'll, it'll be exciting. While Jeva is excited about this weekend, head coach Tom Brands is stressing how crucial these duels are. Lots been said about the importance of dual meets and and um, you know the national duels and what the you know what the impact will be on the importance of duels. Uh, but really, it's down to us going somewhere or someone coming to us, and it's important either either campus. For more on Iowa's wrestling's trip out east, we bring in our own wrestling insider, Danny Payne. Now, Danny, you spent some time with the team, obviously, yesterday. A big day for Jeva, but what are a couple other matchups that have your eye? Well, Jalen won at 133. Again, Tony Ramos is senior. He has number six ranked Mason Beckman of Lehigh. He carries a 39-4 and four record this season, done a lot of wrestling. He is ranked number six in the country again, and he placed fourth at the Midlands Championships last year as, or last year as a freshman. Excuse me. Now there's only a few duels left before the Big Ten Tournament. Is the team preparing for this duel any differently? Well, yes, they are. Tom Brand said it yesterday. He said it's cliche, but the team is preparing differently. They have shorter workouts, higher intensity, he says cliche, but that's the way it's going as they approach the postseason with Big Tens and NCAAs coming up here in a few weeks. Thanks for that, Danny. And Iowa Hoops also returning to action this weekend as the women are at home tomorrow to face Illinois right here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And the men take on Penn State and University Park on Saturday. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for in tonight's show. A whole lot more coming up on Thursday's edition of the program with a preview on Iowa Hoops and a look into women's track. But for now, it's back to you at the desk. Only with Daily Iowan TV can you get an inside look into Thursday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Take a closer look at the UI's latest alcohol harm reduction plan. And read more about the Goober National nominee who came to campus today. But before we leave you tonight, a crazy story out of Woodstock, Illinois. A goof in the system allowed a Shell gas station to sell gas for just a penny a gallon. That's right. The gas station sold gas at this price for about two hours. As the word about the almost free gas went around, cars began lining up to fill up. Woodstock police officials reported having to use an emergency shutoff to stop sales from continuing. Before the sales ended, cars were blocking traffic. You know, Stefan, if I could get gas for a penny a gallon, I think I would drive a bit more. Yeah, Ran, I think if gas were that cheap, it would take only 12 cents to fill my car. <laughs> well, that's your most current edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Iowa S. J M C. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? I joined and now I make videos for the university. S J M C.